get in the Cadillac. We've got a long drive ahead. We're going to see the grip. Hey again, everyone. Emulation has come a long way since the days of firing up Nesticle or Genesis from the MS-DOS command line. These days, most people just reach for RetroArch as an all-in-one solution. It does a great job at being a jack-of-all-trades, but the setup can be a little bit daunting due to the sheer number of configuration options. In this video, I'm going to go through installing the Pigs in a Blanket build of RetroArch for the PlayStation Vita, setting up bezels or overlays, setting up shaders, possibly, maybe, they're a little unstable, scanning games into playlists, and adding thumbnails. This whole process is going to require transferring many tens of thousands of tiny files to your Vita's SD card. The Vita is notorious for being rough on SD cards and file system corruption. So back up your card before continuing, and it's probably a good idea to put it into an SD reader on your PC and run CheckDisk with chkdsk/f and your drive name. Using an SD reader rather than tethering the Vita should also transfer files a lot faster, but this is still going to take quite a while. The Pigs in a Blanket build of RetroArch can be downloaded from the RetroArch build bot, an automated process that compiles the latest source code submitted to RetroArch. The latest build is the one without a date and time, and the past builds are available if you need them. And you might. RetroArch is very unstable on the PS Vita, and shaders have become even more so in later versions. For me, this started many, many versions back, probably somewhere around 1.10. So you may need to download a different build if you find the current one being too buggy. To download RetroArch, go to the BuildBot site and navigate to the nightly PlayStation builds to find the one for the PS Vita, and download the VPK and pack of data files. RetroArch comes with its own set of shaders, but the Vita requires one specifically compiled for the Pigs in a Blanket build. The pack of special CG shaders for the Vita can be found on GitHub, which is linked down below. Download them and then head over to the page to download the Pigs in a Blanket configuration tool. This will install two required shader plugins to your Vita. If you want to set up the overlays from the bezel project, you can use the modified files linked in the description. Create a directory named RetroArch in the data directory of your Vita's SD card. Extract the RetroArch data pack and copy the contents to the newly created RetroArch directory. Extract the compiled CG shaders and copy the CG directory to your RetroArch shaders folder on your handheld. Copy the overlay and config folders to the data folder on your PS Vita. Also copy the RetroArch installer, PIB installer, and any downloaded DAT or metadata files for RetroArch to your handheld. Copy any BIOS or system ROMs to the RetroArch system folder. And finally copy any ROMs you want to try to your system. A hopefully quick aside about ROMs and their organization. Most things in RetroArch are hierarchical. RetroArch is the libretro frontend, libretro manages the systems, the systems have cores, and the cores run games. Each stage can have its own settings that override the settings of other levels. Organize your ROMs following the system names used by RetroArch. That way the overlays and playlist thumbnail scanner will properly detect the systems. The list is in the description below if you want to copy and paste. Disconnect your Vita from your PC and find your charger. The installation and downloads on the Vita may take a long time. On your system, run the PIB installer and restart when required. Launch Vita Shell and then install RetroArch. I'm going to skip through the install here, but it's going to take a long time. Expect about 10 or 15 minutes. This is the folder structure that I've set up. The paths for the overlays and config files are hard coded, so if they're placed anywhere other than the UXO slash data directory, they won't work. Load up RetroArch and give it a minute if it seems slow. The first launch of RetroArch may take a little longer than usual. Once it's loaded, there are a few things I like to tweak. The first is the quick menu hotkey. Navigate to settings and then select the input settings. Scroll down and select hotkeys and then find menu toggle controller combo. From the list, select the button combination that you find easy to press but won't press accidentally. I like holding select for two seconds or down and select. Sometimes RetroArch on the PS Vita fails to save the configuration. To make sure things are saving correctly, try doing it manually. Navigate to the main menu and then select Configuration File. And in the final menu, select Save Current Configuration. Before we can use them, we need to tell RetroArch where to find the shaders, overlays, and game config files. Navigate to the main menu and then select Settings. Scroll way down to the bottom and find Directory Settings. Change the config path to UXO slash data slash config. Change the shaders path to the path of your shaders you copied earlier. 
Change the overlay path to UXO slash data slash overlay. There are a handful of ways to get ROMs running on RetroArch. If you want to load a single ROM for a single time, navigate to Load Content from the main menu. If you want to manage a large number of ROMs like a lot of people do, RetroArch makes things relatively simple through Playlists and the ROM Library Explorer. Playlists are created by scanning media through the Import Content menu. If you launch a directory scan, RetroArch will attempt to match the checksum of the ROM files against entries in its ROM database files to detect your game. This can be time-consuming and sometimes leads to duplicate entries depending on how your files are saved. Here I'm going to add some games through the manual scanner, which should speed things up a bit, because RetroArch won't have to guess what system the files are for. Browse to and select the content directory. Select the system name in the next box. If you have a preferred emulator core, select it, and if your files are compressed and the emulator supports running games from compressed files, select Scan within Archives. If your ROMs match those from common ROM sets like no intro, specifying the system name should be enough for the scanner to pick them up and create a playlist based on the system name. Now that the scan is complete, let's see if the correct paths for the overlays were set earlier. I'm going to load up a game and with any luck there should be an overlay filling the black void. Good stuff, looks like they're working, at least for this emulator core. but that playlist is looking a little drab with only icons. I want some colorful thumbnails, so for that I'll use the built-in playlist thumbnail updater. From the main menu, navigate to the online updater. Select playlist thumbnail updater, and then select your playlist. The downloads will take a while, but if you have more than one playlist to scan, you can set two or three to run at the same time. Don't launch any games though, because then the scan will stop. You can swap through thumbnail types with the left face button and load full screen thumbnails with the start key. The downloader will grab box art, screenshots, and title screens, and you can choose which you'd like displayed in the UI. RetroArch is pretty limited when it comes to skins, but there is a lot of customization available with the built in themes. I'd like to enable two thumbnails, so here's how to do that. From the main menu, navigate to Settings, and then User Interface then scroll down and select Appearance. To enable the second thumbnail, scroll down, select it, and then select which type of thumbnail you'd like displayed. There are a few other themes included with RetroArch if you want to explore them. To change themes, navigate to the menu and then select Settings. Select User Interface and then select Menu. I like the vertical scrolling GLUI theme. The last thing I want to cover in this video is using shaders. As mentioned before, the Pigs in a Blanket build of RetroArch supports the specially compiled CG shaders. Many of them cause RetroArch to crash, and the ones that consistently work on my handheld are the two NES CRT shaders and the bilinear. To load a shader, launch a game, and then bring up the quick menu. Scroll down and select Load. Use the file browser to select a shader, and it will be loaded up, if it works. Many of the shaders cause crashes on my system, but you may have better luck. For me, the NES Mini Curved Shader looks good enough, but there are a couple others that may work out better for specific situations. If you save an override when a shader is loaded, the shader should load next time a ROM from that override category is used. I'm not sure how well the differences are going to show up on screen because they're pretty subtle, but the rest of the video is just going to show how the Bilinear Shader, NES CRT Mini Shader, and NES CRT Mini Curved Shader look when applied to a few different games. Thanks for watching. Try to blast those obstacles out of our path, but be careful not to hit any of the living creatures. Just drive, Tenrak! Leave the shooting to me!